Oh, that is comfy. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. Good morning. I took a 10 day break from vlogging and now I don't remember how to do it anymore. I feel like nervous. I feel like we're meeting for the very first time. Hi, Amanda. I guess you won't actually know that I took a 10 day break because there's not gonna be a break in videos, but I mostly only took a break because I had just gotten so far ahead in videos that whenever a video posted, it didn't like, three weeks since it actually was filmed, which just felt like a really long time. So welcome to Closer to the Future. That's exciting. For this little work week vlog, little nine to five vlog. I'm excited because this week is honestly just very busy with a lot of the things that are fitting in to work. There are a lot of continuing education type events that are going on. So I think that'll be fun and also be able to share like some of the stuff that I'm learning in my continuing education events. Today, I'm actually going to a full day in-person training at the fancy building that I did like my orientation and stuff at. It is, I believe it's called Solution Focused training to prevent burnout. I know it's solution focused. I know it's preventing burnout. So I think that'll be hopefully really fun. It's for like all the social workers. So I'm gonna meet some people that don't actually work where I work and also gonna hang out with some people that do actually work where I work. And we get, I think six and a half CEU hours, which is awesome. So I'll talk more about that like as it's coming. But since I'm going to the fancy building, I think I'm gonna get myself a kombucha today because they always have those and they're so good. And they always have the lavender flavor, which is so good. But anyways, yes, my break off vlogging Felt kind of weird, honestly, because I don't think I've ever taken that long of a break from vlogging since I started YouTube. It was Saturday to Monday, like Saturday, skip Monday to the next Monday. I'd like to think that like, oh, I was so much more in the moment. Like, oh, it was so restful. And honestly, I don't really feel like it was any of that. It just kind of was. I feel like what's fun with vlogging whenever it's just like vlogging my life like this is that it doesn't add too, too much into a day other than several like kind of be five minute long chunks where I'm like reflecting on my day. But I feel like that's a good practice to be in is like to reflect like that. And so, I don't know. I didn't come away with any great, wonderful tidbits of wisdom for you from my sabbatical. I'm sure there'll be things that come up this week that probably like happened last week that I now want to tell you about. Oh, for example, do you see that I hung up the map back there? That's pretty exciting. And I'm in the process of getting a chair for back there that may actually be able to get delivered to me, which is awesome. But I just want to say hi, good morning, introduce myself since I feel like we don't know each other anymore since I took such a long break. I'm going to be like, Anna, we literally saw a video post of you three days ago, which is going to be true, probably. You didn't even get the chance to miss me, but I promise you I missed you. So <laughs> we'll catch up. We'll catch up later. A little outfit chat. Got my, my green shirt, my purple pants. Gonna put on a little cardigan because I think that the building that I'm gonna be in is gonna be cold. It's not gonna be cold outside, but the building I'm gonna be in is gonna be cold. I'm gonna try and stop and fill up my tires at the gas station on my way, which makes me feel, I don't know, big and handy. <laughs> I like actually did my makeup today. Like I did all the steps, a little contour, a little blush. I'm gonna try to find a pen, I think, to bring with me in case there's a place to take notes or something. But I think I'm gonna head out. I think I'm gonna be early, but I would always so much rather be early than late. And I realized that I never marked down or wrote down which room this is gonna be in. And it's only in my work email, which I can't like access from home. At least I don't think I can. Maybe I'll try that so I can see what room I'm gonna be in. Searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. All of my tires were entirely fine. I guess I just like had it in my head that they were low. <laughs> guess I just totally made that up. But I mean, at least now I feel the confidence that I know that they're fine. I have arrived to Mr. Fancy Building. I just saw my supervisor walk in with somebody holding like a big cardboard thing. So I'm assuming that that's the person who's presenting today doing our CEU. That's my guess. Like I said, I'm really excited for it. I have this CEU today. I have one on Thursday and one on Friday and then like regular work sprinkled in between. Like we'll be back at the hospital tomorrow. So if you miss it, don't worry, we'll be back there tomorrow. I feel like as far as updates go in the week we went without each other is that I am mostly doing everything by myself now. 
and I feel like it's a wax and wane of like figuring out how much to do in a day because sometimes like if I check in on every single one of my families in a day then I like don't have much to do the next day because there's no reason for me like every single day to seek every single family out so like I'm trying to kind of balance that of like I don't need to go see all 11 in one day like I can kind of spread it out and as needs come up and everything I just feel like it's the workflow that I still am very much getting used to and like figuring out how to best do the things that I'm doing you know saying it very vaguely but like we'll obviously talk more specifics about more of what I do in a day whenever we go back to the hospital tomorrow also that in-depth social work work week video popping off glad you guys like it thanks for the support but that is a good one to go back to if you're like what does Anna actually do in a day when she's out of hospital I think I'm planning on doing like one of those types of videos a month maybe just like picking maybe like the last week of the month or something like that because since every day is different then each of those videos will be a little bit different but I can do that kind of voiceover going through every task that I do in a day type of video so that those can be more prevalent because I find that like in regular work week vlogs like this I don't always go through every single task that I'm doing because you know life happens outside too so all that being said I'm gonna head inside I'm super early to be honest I texted one of my co-workers because I was about the room number I tried to log in my email I couldn't from home I guess just like security reasons I don't know you can't log in from your email at home makes sense but that meant that I was like, I have no idea where I'm going in this big, huge building that even if I know exactly where I'm going, I'm still probably gonna get lost. So I did text and he had written it down, which is good. But then he was like, are you here yet? And it was 7.45, so then I was like, oh heck, like, did it, is it actually starting at eight? But the fact that I, it's 8.11 now and I just watched my supervisor and the unknown person walk in, I think I'm right that it was 8.30. I think it was just early. Um, yeah, catch up with you later. <laughs> Hope you have a good day too. <laughs> Even if the sky is falling down Hi, good to meet you. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down Get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know Look at the deal that I got on this cake. 336 for all of this. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But I did want to tell you a little bit about the training that I had today. The people have commented asking more about like the details of things that I learned and everything. And so I wanted to do that with this one, but it was solution focused thinking to prevent burnout. And so the person that was giving the training is actually from Denver and she is backed in like solution focused therapies, but it was a lot of talking about like how to use tools from solution focused thinking in yourself to prevent burnout. Some of the things that I found most interesting, I won't talk about everything she talked about because it was a long <laughs> day of training, but some of the things that I found the most interesting was thinking of a like continuum and I can even like, I can even show you. Thinking of a continuum and thinking of yourself, like what traits would you describe yourself as and would your clients describe you as whenever you're at your very best? And that's like the continuum over here. And so some words that we came up with were like creative, efficient, flexible, compassionate, kind, advocating, empathetic, resourceful, positive, supportive, passionate, patient, a clear communicator, fun, calm, fulfilled. And recognizing like that it, this is the very top where we most often spend our time is a little bit over in the normal zone. So this is the normal zone right here. And within the normal zone, you have good days and you have bad days. And so the good days, you know, a lot of those words that we mentioned are true. And then the bad days, maybe you're really just strung out, not loving it. Like a lot of fires to put out at work and everything but in the bad days of normal you're still not at that like so overwhelmed you're frozen or so exhausted you're not like genuinely thinking about leaving the job it's just kind of like a that was a bad day and being able to acknowledge that so it's like you still know you're in the right place when you're in that normal zone but you can have variation in the days in there and then we kind of talked a little bit about if you move beyond that normal zone getting into the danger zone over here and the danger zone is something that it is normal to like dip in and out of but the biggest thing is learning how to pull yourself out of the danger zone because if you don't do anything when you're in the danger zone you're just gonna dip further and further and further down into it which is also when you reach burnout or the point of no return is what she kept calling it and so like thinking of words that may describe you possibly when you're in the danger zone
one would be things like short, curt, tired, negative, stressed, overwhelmed. But there's a big difference between dipping in and out of the danger zone and living in the danger zone. And she talked a lot about how it's not necessarily just about the work you're doing of like why you want to be in that normal instead of that danger zone, but a lot of it is for your own personal best being self too in social work. And this is definitely true. A lot of jobs are stepping stones to where you eventually maybe want to end up. And lots of social workers will have lots of jobs in their life if you want to. It's just very common in the field of social work, which you can already even see like in my journey of having a job post-grad for just under a year and then moving somewhere new. And then most likely I'll have several more jobs in my life, like before retirement. I don't know yet what those will be, but just most likely I will. But talking about how if you are in the normal zone of functioning at a job, you can see like a really good opportunity come along and you can be like, oh, this is something I've been waiting for. And you can be in kind of like your right mind sort of <laughs> while you're making that decision of jumping into a new job or following a new opportunity or taking a promotion or whatever it may be. You're in already a safe place. And so any step you make out of that place is like a purposeful one that's good for you and you get to really think about before doing it. But if you're in that danger zone or that point of no return, then lots of times you may be like, anything is better than this, especially when you get to that point of no return. Anything is better than this. Like I would take any kind of opportunity that came up right now just to get out of this situation, which depending on how long you've been following around and how well you know my journey is pretty much where I was at with my previous job. And it was like any opportunity that comes up has to be better than this and I'll take it. And obviously I was still like picky about the opportunities that I was pursuing because I didn't want to end up somewhere similar or worse or anything. Um, but I definitely resonated with that and just like seeing that continuum. And so you can kind of be aware of like where you're at in a job and recognizing that you can have bad days, but still know that you're where is best for you to be right then versus getting to that point of no return where once you reach a point of no return of like burnout time, Type characteristics in a job genuinely it is very very hard to return from that like once you reach that certain point where you just like cannot get out of bed to go to work like you have to have something different you know Let's see. Some things we talked about was like sprint thinking versus marathon thinking, which I won't dive too deep into, but I feel like you probably just know the comparison, you know, when people talk about sprints versus marathons, basically talking about how it's best to have a marathon type approach to your work and to your career and to your trajectory. Like a sprint, you can push through the pain because like you could see the finish line in sight and you just have to like hunker down and do something no matter how uncomfortable it may be it will all be over soon type of feeling. Whereas with a marathon and like with marathon mindset, you're making decisions now that will be good for the outcome later. So whether that's you making like sacrifices now so that you can stepping stone up to where you want to be. The focus is on the long-term goal, which is helpful in preventing burnout because it gives you a purpose within yourself of like why you are where you are right now. I think that can even be helpful for when you're in school, understanding that like school is hard, especially like your bachelor's can be hard. Your master's is also definitely gonna be hard as far as juggling a lot of balls at once, doing a lot of things, being very busy, having a lot of assignments, but also recognizing that making sacrifices in your master's degree program means that eventually you'll graduate and eventually you will have that degree and have the opportunities that you're hoping to have. And so making like some sacrifices now for the outcome later can be super beneficial. It gives you this internal locus of control. So something that I thought was definitely very helpful that she talked about was how we can help coworkers because lots of times in professions that are prone to burnout, we can drag other people down with us. Like if you imagine you're coming in on a good day, you feel fine about the day, you don't feel too stressed you're just like you know you're ready to go you're having a good day and maybe a coworker themselves is in like that danger zone that we talked about and it's very easy for them to pull you into that danger zone with them so she talked a lot about being solution focused even when that comes to like venting with coworkers and how it is so easy to sit in a problem and if a coworker has like a problem that they're struggling with they're feeling feelings about they're wanting to vent about diving just like straight into that mud pile with them and how ultimately that's not helpful for the both of you. So she made a distinction of like, if a coworker has something that you can like actually help with, like if they're trying to ask for advice with a client or like genuinely it's like a task that they're overwhelmed with that like you can help with, then just help them. But in those instances where people are complaining or being negative and just like venting to get something off their chest, so often our initial instinct is to be like, oh my gosh, what happened? So often our initial instinct is like, if your coworker walks in and they're just like, I'm so frustrated, this is BS, I'm so 
so done with this day. Like, I'm gonna quit. This is this is it for me. It's our initial instinct to be like, oh my gosh, what happened? And then that gets them to relive whatever negative thing was going on. It really puts focus on that problem and like makes it bigger, basically makes it be the big thing. And then whenever they're telling you the problem, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that sucks. You're right, that is so bad. Like this is the worst. And it's just easy to jump right into the mud pile with them. So she was talking about how like with using solution focused thinking in interactions like this, solution focused doesn't mean covering up or ignoring like pain or feelings or what got a person to where they are right now. It means showing compassion and like giving time to a person, but then ultimately focusing on more solution type things. And so in the case where your coworker comes in and they're like, this is BS, I'm so done with this, I'm so frustrated. She said it was the most important thing to show compassion to them and then just like shut up essentially, because then whenever they have on their chest, they can get it off and then you can ask some follow-up questions about that are more focused on outcomes and the process of feeling better or making a solution. And so if a coworker comes in, they're like, this is BS, I'm so done with this, all of that. And like, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Zippy, zippy. <laughs> but like showing with your body language that you're still there for them and you're still intrigued. And then lots of times what will happen is people will vent off whatever they need to vent. Sometimes people want to relive everything that got them to feel in that way. Sometimes they don't, but just like letting someone basically vent and then they kind of just in conversation, like you get a cue whenever someone's done talking, but then focusing more on like the process of them getting better, even things like what helps you get through days like this? So you can help them then do things to turn their day around. Or an example she even gave is that if someone's like, I'm quitting, this is it. After they vent everything off, you're like, so where would you rather work? Because sometimes people genuinely are in that place where then they'll start talking about the dream that they have of where they would rather work and why they're so frustrated with where they're at because they want to be here. And if so, then that's a conversation in and of itself because you're like getting to their heart and it's really more of like getting to know them and getting to show compassion to them as a person. Or sometimes then people are like, well, I don't actually want to quit. Like I do want to work here. And it kind of leads the conversation into like reasons of why you stay even when days are hard. So I definitely thought that was interesting. So just a big like takeaway of the day is basically like what you focus on gets bigger. For example, again, this is a long clip, but it was a really long training and I feel like there was good stuff in there. For example, if I have my finger right here and I focus on it, I can still see everything else around, but I'm like very focused on that finger and everything else is blurry. So like if this is the problem and I'm only talking about the problem, I'm only thinking about the problem, then it is the focus. Whereas if I focus outside, elsewhere, on everything else, the problem is still there. I'm still very aware of the problem. I'm not gonna forget about the problem, but I can also continue talking, doing this vlog clip and everything with this problem still there, focusing on the other things. Point being, the problem is still here, but I'm not focusing on it. So it's not just getting like worse and worse. And I'm not just thinking about it and thinking about it. Some like mental exercises that we talked about are if you have a tough task that you're doing or something hard that you're getting through, thinking ahead to when you're done with a day or when you finished with the task, thinking to that moment and thinking how might I have gotten there. It kind of like mentally tricks your brain into giving you next steps because it's so hard whenever you feel stuck to be like, okay, but what do I need to do? What do I need to do next? But if you think, okay, at the end of today, I will have gotten all of my notes done. I will have had this hard conversation with this client, blah, 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 blah. And thinking, okay, how would I have gotten to that point? It like gives your brain a new path to come up with ways to get to that solution when you're done. I think a lot of the stuff we talked about are things that I've heard about with burnout before, but I did appreciate the not focusing on the problem as much, just because I think that's a refreshing mindset. But being able to focus on, you know, like thinking forward, I got through this. How did I do that? <laughs> it helps. Super long clip, but it was a super long training. I'm gonna get to my, my cake, but I'll see you later. Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high I feel like this is exactly what I looked like yesterday. Something very exciting this morning though is the fact that hopefully I'm getting a chair for right here. I say hopefully because it's Facebook Marketplace and you never trust Facebook Marketplace until the item is literally in your grasp. But if it does come, which I'm expecting it does. One, I'll definitely be splurging on this chair, but two, I'll have a chair sitting right there to make myself a little 
reading nook, which is quite exciting. I'm kind of sitting and having my, my chill time with breakfast. It is 6.23 right now. Once I head into work today, it'll be a bit of catch up since two of us were at the training yesterday and then some people will be there today. So it'll be, it's lower coverage basically all week since people are going in and out for the training. But then also since I had a day not seeing any of my people, any of my caseload, I'll just have more to catch up on and to see. And I'll have two days worth of maybe new people coming in. So I, I don't know what the day will hold, but it may be busy, which is preferable to me. I like busier days. Can I sit in there too? <laughs> oh, that is comfy. Oh, yeah. That is comfy. This is awesome. So basically, and did you hear her saying too, cause you know, Zach, how I told you, the run and upholstery business, just like redoing couches and chairs and stuff like that. Did you hear her say they did a couch for the Black Panther set? That's what the, she was showing me bags that she makes with the extra fabric. And we're going for Black Panther set. like my new sweatshirt and my new chair. Try not to let the beauty of the chair distract you as I sit at this desk now. But this sweatshirt I got, I got it off of Etsy. I'm gonna put the seller's name on the screen. I think it's so fun. I don't know, I really like this color when I see it on other people. I feel like it's not like within my color palette. So it kind of threw me off when I saw it and I was like, put it on. I was like, mm, maybe I should have gotten something different, but it's a little Halloween town. And I also have my cake. And I also have my little like body armor fresca mix. It's really good. Basically thriving right now. It is Wednesday. I decided that I wasn't going to go to running club tonight. Main reason being when I got home, I just really wanted to be able to chill. I just felt really tired. I had a very, very busy day at work today, which is not a bad thing, but I got 13,000 steps at work. And so going from that to running just feels like too much. <laughs> A lot of the things that I did today, there were several meetings, like the regular rounds and everything, and then a lot was coordinating resources for housing for an upcoming discharge. So I did what I could today. Things are not perfect yet. Things are not set in stone, but I know that I did what I could. So that's always a good feeling. I don't know how I'm gonna spend the night. I feel like I could read. I feel like I could watch YouTube, could do crosswords, but I also feel like that's what I've been doing for a long time. So I'm, I'm really not sure. I think when I took my break from vlogging, it like made me run out of things to talk about now. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm getting back in the habit of it. Don't stress. It's okay. Happy Halloween season. It is fully August 16th today, but it came in the mail today, so gotta wear it. Good morning. I've been a little bit vloggy fail this week. I don't know if I'm going through like residual funk because I don't feel like I did whenever I made that like slump video a couple weeks ago. Or maybe I'm just like working to get back into vlogging since I took the week off, but it's Friday morning and I am gonna go run this morning. I don't know why, but in the past week, like I ran on Monday and then I just like haven't. Like Wednesday I tried, but I was exhausted because I walked 13,000 steps at work that day. And then yesterday I like had a loose plan to and then just didn't. But my half marathon is tomorrow. So this should be the week that I'm like most excited to run, but I don't know. I'm excited for the half, I just like haven't been running in the evenings but i felt like going from monday until saturday would probably be too long to be like nice and prepared for the half so i figured i would just go do like three miles this morning or so to kind of be i don't know work those muscles again i'll put one of my like little new lights i'll wear one of those today since it's gonna be dark out in the morning but let's see yesterday i did have another of those continuing education units little classes because i know i mentioned that i have quite a few of those this week Yesterday was on the intersection of chronic illness and mental health. I feel like that was very beneficial to learn about. It just talked a lot about like the specific, I guess like risk factors that chronic illness adds to someone's mental health. It also talked about the power of like support groups and things for people's mental health because it is just so much different talking to someone who's been through or going through the exact same thing. Well, exact. The same thing, same type of experience that someone is versus like even if you are a mental health clinician but you have never personally experienced chronic illness, like you can be helpful but it just is a whole lot different talking to people who have been through that same experience. So that was pretty cool just to like learn and talk about. Maybe a bit of hair tie real quick. 
I got some new hair ties. But I wasn't even sure if I was gonna make it back downstairs to do my continuing education unit yesterday because I was super busy again. Again, it wasn't like a bad busy. We started the morning and had the step down unit rounds, which take a long time, but it only happened once a week. Thursday was just that day. Those ended up taking long enough that they went straight into the ICU rounds, but I feel like Sad, we'll try again. I feel like I didn't even like fully pay attention in either of the rounds because I was going to be covering a care conference for one of my coworkers who was gonna be at the training yesterday. And it was like a meeting with the family and the doctor that originally was gonna be Friday today. And then I guess got rescheduled to Thursday as of like Wednesday night, if that makes sense. So that's what I was gonna cover for. But I needed to work on like getting an interpreter secured and also getting like a location secured. And it was in the morning that I found out that there was still confusion even among the family about what time I was gonna be. A lot of like figuring out who was gonna be where, when type of things. And it ended up being that we're just gonna do it. They're just gonna do it because she'll be back today. So it was just like this big whirlwind of like, party planning in the worst way that ended up being where I didn't have to cover it. But I was like doing that kind of like during rounds, like messaging people and stuff. So I wasn't like fully paying attention as much as I usually do. Still working in housing for some patients. Did some FMLA paperwork yesterday. Helped family with getting connected to occupational therapy services for whenever they discharged. I did that yesterday. Introduced myself to a new family that come in. So there's just a lot to do. And then I was doing my notes throughout the day, like as I was going, so that was good. But I am gonna get ready to run because I feel like feel like I gotta. I, well, I definitely gotta. Where do I have a half marathon tomorrow? <laughs> Little O O T D. Except I'm not gonna be keeping this braid in. I do not believe it's just there right now because my hair is funky. Because whenever I run in the morning, it just. It's not like even I got too, too sweaty, but my hair was fun. I am driving myself today. I'm not going with Zach because after work is whenever I go pick up the packet for my half marathon tomorrow. This run honestly was like super slow and felt like it was the second run that I've ever done in my life ever, which is like, why is that happening? I don't know, but I ran 11 miles like two weeks ago, so I should be able to run 13.1 tomorrow. We will see. <laughs> I made a smoothie for breakfast, I have my coffee, all of it's going to go because somehow, I don't know if I lost track of time or like I'm just not used to running in the morning, I guess. So I don't know, I thought I gave myself enough time but I kind of started rushing towards the end and I am about to head out. But the big news that I got on my run that was very, very exciting is the fact that our couch is scheduled. Our couch delivery is scheduled for next week, which means it's all ready to go. They just gotta get it to us now. So it's next week that they're gonna deliver it. We ordered this couch on July 1st and we knew like it they said it was gonna take six to eight weeks because we were getting a fabric they didn't have in stock. So we were like, okay, we'll wait six to eight weeks and oh, it felt long, <laughs> but next week. So I think it makes it be like seven weeks total. Next week, we should be in the couch, but I'm gonna have to work now and I'll see you later. Maybe there is a star with your name. One thing I know is that there should be. I just finished work and now it's time to go pick up my packet for my half marathon, which I think will be exciting whenever I like actually get to the expo and everything. It was hot in my car. It was a good day at work today. I feel like I did a lot, but I'll catch you up on that later so I can just go ahead and be in the traffic. Don't try to leave Atlanta during rush hour, but here I am trying to leave Atlanta during rush hour. Welcome to this little segment called let's talk about my work day while I unbox and then package up again a baby shower gift that I got for my cousin. There's a lot in here. So today, I forget what I've mentioned and not so far. I was a little bit stressed going into the day because it's headed into the weekend and I've kind of mentioned stuff about housing in the past couple of days. I don't feel comfortable going into details about things as the things are happening. Long story short, housing was not secured today housing got secured. Safe discharge can happen. So I'm feeling good about that. I did a SSI disability application today. 
I did several introductions today of new families that are kind of coming in and out. And then I also had clinical supervision today with my clinical supervisor. And I didn't even realize that we were like at this point since I started my, wow, this is heavy, since I started my job. But today was my 90 day review. Yes, that fits in the bag. That's wonderful. Today was my 90 day review. So we went over my 90 day review. I did good and everything, but it very much is like a, are they moving towards being competent and good at the different things? So I think the categories was like needs improvement, solid, standout, role model. I think those are the categories, which are cute categories. So I was standout, or no, 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 no. I was solid in everything and I was standout in one. I'm trying to remember what that one was now that I think about it. You'd think I would remember. I think it was working with colleagues and like being part of the team. They gave me standout in, which is fun. But so I had clinical supervision, was able to talk just like a few more cases and talk more about like my adjustment. And I just, it's so foreign to me being so well set up and supported in a job. But obviously like that's a great and wonderful thing. And obviously I drove to Roswell, which because my half marathon is tomorrow, which I'm gonna do my own separate vlog with, but I was able to pick up my little race number. You have to do that the day before. They don't do race day number pickups. And so it took like 35 minutes to drive there and then like an hour to drive back. So I feel like that was my entire night. This boxing ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. But I have a cousin who's having a baby, a cousin and his wife who are having a baby. So they're having a baby shower next weekend. And I'm gonna drive up to North Carolina for that. That's probably, that's probably when this video is posted. It's like this weekend when you're currently watching it. So go over my Instagram, say hi to North Carolina. But baby shower, when I got her off the registry, maybe you saw it when I put it in. I thought this was a really great thing. I mean, I don't know anything about them. I've never seen them before. I obviously like haven't had need to use it before, but this was on her registry and it's a labor and delivery and postpartum recovery kit. And it has bathroom essentials bags, delivery and nursing gown plus socks, upside down peri bottle, disposable postpartum underwear, four pairs of them, instant ice maxi pads, four pads, perineal cooling pad liners, 24 witch hazel liners, perineal healing foam. So like there's so much in here and I feel like it's everything that you like hear about <laughs> being helpful whenever you're recovering from labor and delivery. And I do think like obviously I'm so excited for babies, love babies, always so excited for babies. But there's a thing where it's like, it's like everyone buys things for babies, gets excited for babies and sometimes moms can get forgotten. So I just felt like, I felt like it was kind of fun to get the thing that she asked for for herself. Oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> But then I thought this was cute too. They asked for instead of cards, like in place of cards, to give a book and like to write, you know, a sweet little note like inside or something. And so this is like a fun little trivia fact about me. My lovey, whenever I was a kid, like that I would just like carry around and sleep with and snuggle with, and it was my absolute favorite thing, um, <laughs> was Go Dog Go by P.D. Eastman. I think I always thought it was a Dr. Seuss book because it has the cat in the hat, but it's really just the beginner books branding type thing. It's not a Dr. Seuss book. P.D. Eastman. I like haven't read this in forever. Dog. Big dog. <laughs> little dog. <laughs> Big dogs and little dogs. Black and white dogs. Hello. Hello. Do you like my hat? I do not. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's a classic. That's a plot twist right there. One little dog going in, three big dogs going out. A red dog on a blue tree, a blue dog on a red tree, a green dog on a yellow tree, some big dogs and some little dogs playing around in cars. A dog out of a car. Two big dogs going up, one little dog going down. The green dog is up, the yellow dog is down, the blue dog is in, the red dog is out. One dog up on a house, three dogs down in the water. I wasn't gonna read this whole thing, but pretty much all the way there, so. A green dog over a tree, a yellow dog under a tree. Two dogs in a house on a boat in the water, a dog over the water, a dog under the water. Hello again, hello. Do you like my hat? I do not like it. Goodbye again, goodbye. <laughs> Those are my favorite characters. The dogs are all going around and around and around. Go around again. The sun is up, the sun is yellow, the yellow sun is over the house. It is hot out here in the sun. It is not hot here under the house. Oh, this is a good part too. Now it is night. Three dogs at a party on a boat at night. Dogs at work, work dogs work. Dogs at play, play dogs play. Hello again, hello. 
oh, what's gonna happen? Do you like my hat? I do not like that hat. Goodbye again, goodbye. This is good. Dogs in cars again, going away, going away fast. Look at those dogs go. Go dogs go, that's when we get the title. Go dogs go. Stop dogs, stop. The light is red now. Go dogs go. The light is green now. <laughs> you thought, you thought. Two dogs at play, at play up on top. Go down dogs, do not play up there. Go down. Now it is night. Night is not a time for play. It is time for sleep. The dogs go to sleep. They will sleep all night. Now it is day. The sun is up. Now it is time for all dogs to get up. Get up! It is day. Time to get going. Go, dogs go. There's that title again. There they go. Look at those dogs go. Why are they going fast in those cars? What are they going to do? What? Where are those dogs going? Oh, where are they going? There's going to be a little like party in a tree. And they're all gonna be like in the tree together. That's him. Oh, okay, I didn't read that before I just said that. Look where they are going. They are all going to that big tree over there. Now the cars stop, now all the dogs get out and now look where those dogs are going. To the tree, to the tree. Up the tree, up the tree, up they go to the top of the tree. Why, will they work there? Will they play there? What is up there on the top of the tree? It's gonna be just, oh, this is just how I pictured it in my head. A dog party, a big dog party. Big dogs, little dogs, red dogs, blue dogs, yellow dogs, green dogs, black dogs, and white dogs are all at a dog party. What a dog party. Hello again. And now do you like my hat? I do. What a hat. I like it. I like that party hat. Goodbye. Goodbye. I will refrain from reading the board book version of Rainbow Fish to you, but that's the book that Zach chose. Low key, that's a good book. <laughs> People ask for book recommendations. There you go, that is one. I also got diapers, size two. If you bring diapers to the shower, you get entered in a raffle. I don't know what the prize is, but if you bring a gift receipt, you get two extra entries, like a gift receipt for exchanging sizes. This is so fun. This is my first baby shower I've gone to for like a peer, if you can't tell that I'm excited. I think I should go, since I'm starting that new video tomorrow for my half marathon since I'm running my half marathon tomorrow. I feel like I was a lot more excited for it two weeks ago than I am right now, but I think that that's just like kind of last minute doubts kind of coming in of like, oh, but I probably can't do it anyways. I probably can't finish it. I'll probably walk the whole thing. I don't know. I just feel like those are the feelings that are coming in, which probably just should be like expected of, yeah, I'll feel like a little more doubtful as it gets closer, but also then reminding myself that I trained for this. I ran 11 miles, so I should be able to run 13.1. And like, if it gets way too hard, I'll just walk. Subscribe before you go. I feel like this was such an exciting video. Like we got that chair, we got this sweatshirt, we got go die go. I'll see you next time.